Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. And today I have Dr. John Deloney on with me, Ramsey personality and mental health expert. John, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on, appreciate it. I love talking about this stuff with you because money is not just tactical, right, that we just use, but it's also emotional. It Mm -hmm. affects our mental health. There's so much there. And I feel like more than ever today, people are maxed out. They're maxed Mm -hmm. out with their lives, with their time, with their schedules, but also with their money. I mean, they are living paycheck to paycheck. Their budget is like literally to the penny because they have nothing, they have no margin. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot. And that really does affect your mental health. Yeah, you're, you're dealing with the same stuff I'm dealing with. Every person I talk to, every caller is stressed, stressed, fried, just electrified, right? Yes. And so I think it's important for everybody to realize your body has one stress response for all stressors, and it's to take everything and go, yep. I gotta solve this problem right now, and we're gonna run from it, we're gonna fight it, or we're gonna shut down, right? Yes. And that's it, right? Yep. But it's happening with our money, with our relationships, with everything. Okay, and we were talking about this earlier today, but I, I just find it fascinating, though, that stress, anxiety, all of these things, come into play and, and your body responds. I know that sounds right. so silly, but like I didn't re- I don't think I even realized it. But when you start to dive in, I'm like, your body is so like it's like your soul, your emotions, your body, your mind, like all of these things work together so much so much mm-hmm. more connected than I think I even realized. Only in the past four or five hundred years have we been obsessed with our thinking part. Uh-huh. Let's think about the problem. Our body is off to the races, often before we even realize it. Yes. Right? So some guy will come in and remind you of a, of a mean boyfriend you used to have. Your heart is off to the races before your head has even drawn that connection, right? Yes. So yeah, our bodies are so intuitive. They're so brilliant. They're so wonderfully designed to take care of us. Yeah, it's so important. So what are things, what are signs that people can see in themselves that, okay, wow, this money part of my life, it's Mm. affecting my mental health, or maybe even my spouse. So I like to distill mental health down into three places. Number one, where am I safe? Where am I reasonably in control of Mm. now or tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And the third is where am I connected with people, Mm. right? And so when you find yourself stressing and saying, how can I get control over a situation? Click, 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 I'm gonna buy stuff, right? I need another freezer, I need more bullets and coffee or whatever it is. Where am I out of control, right? So I'm gonna restrict my budget, I'm gonna become one of those people that's like no pennies, no spending, no nothing, no joy in my house, right? Um, Or connection, right? When am I trying to just throw money at my friends so we can all get together, right? And I'm gonna gonna bear the financial burden of that because I'm so desperate for connection. That's so good. Those are good three signposts to honestly look at because again, this is such a, it, it can be such a complicated subject right. when you start to dive in and, and peel back these layers. Because you mentioned it earlier, but emotional spending, it's a big oh, one. I mean, man. it's something that I think we we are all guilty of. And diving into this even deeper, I'm like, man, I, because I'm a natural spender, mm-hmm. and I, I mean, I, I am so guilty of it. I mean, I catch myself, and I'm like, man, Rachel, like, you teach this. Like, this yeah, is what yeah, the yeah. show we talk about. I do, this. Too, I do too. And here I am doing it. But there, talk to me kind of about that side, because I know the financial side and the damage it can do mm. to your bank account. But also, it's fulfilling a need. It's, there's a coping mechanism. There's something that's happening with this emotional spending. So yeah, why do you think it's it is? It's neurological, man. You just get that dopamine hit yeah. that says, I'm in control of that, and I can get something, right? And historically speaking, you only had— profound needs when you needed your you needed your tribe, your community, mm-hmm. or you needed food, right? And so now we can just go, there's a limitless supply of things we can just grab, and it makes us feel good. And then, you know when I know I'm not well? When I start telling myself these stories, right? You and I have talked about your um, your delivery box for clothes yep. that she gets all the time. And, but you, subscription. Your subscription box, <laughs> that's right. Um, but how you get that shirt, and you're like, I'm just going to go ahead and buy this one. Yep. And immediately the stories spin up, right? Yes. Like, yes. oh, Winston's going to judge me, or I don't need another shirt. Yes, I do. I work hard for this. I should have. And you just totally. launch, yep. right? Mm-hmm. That's one of those signs like, I'm probably not okay, right? Mm-hmm. I need to check in with somebody that I trust. I'm going to go check in with this budget, right? It's when my stories spin up, that's when I know. I start justifying things to people who aren't even asking me questions. Yes, okay, so... A friend who was in had an amazing counselor, she told me the other day, and I was like, oh my God, that's such good advice, because it's what you're saying. She was like, when someone or an event is like a, on a scale from one to 10, mm-hmm. like a five-ish, a six, but you respond at like a nine, mm-hmm. that gap to, to launch you to a nine or 10 says more about you. Oh, all the time. Than about that person or about the situation. Yes. And the same with spending, right? Like if it's like, oh yeah, this is a, a five, six on the important scale. Yeah, we could buy that, okay. But you start, and you're, you emotionally all of this jump to a nine, and you're like, oh, but I can't. 
It's saying more about you it's, it's than I, the actual purchase, I right? I have to have it. Yeah. And I can't believe you wouldn't even let me have it. They haven't said no. Yeah. I've already, I've had this imaginary right, conversation. Right. And I work so hard. When you start justifying stuff, there's no reason to justify. Yes. It's in your yes. budget. That's when I know I'm probably buying something for the wrong reasons. Yes. Oh, it's right. so good. Okay, so we just dove into emotional spending. Mm -hmm. And so the other side of the spectrum is this compulsive saving. And I Those feel are the true psychopaths, Rachel. They're crazy. We you like guys are crazy. Nuts. No, but really, people applaud savers yes. in the financial world. Like, oh, you're a saver. You're so responsible. All this stuff, which it is you're responsible. so dismissive. It's so responsible to save, I know. Right. Uh, but they get they get rewarded, but that can be as unhealthy, Absolutely. that hoarding mentality, as just emotional spending. Yeah, it just goes back to that control mechanism, and then suddenly you create an identity of control, right? Look at all the things I don't have. Oh, you need that fancy car? I have this. Yes. It just becomes the same pathology. So if you're obsessed with YOLO, you only live once, spin, 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 that's a broken heart over here, right? If you're obsessed and create an identity out of nothing is going to get through my budget, never, never, <laughs> congratulations, you're going to die with a full checking account, right? And no lived experiences and no joy in your life, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a broken heart over here too. It's the same pathology just expressed in different ways. So good. Okay, so let's get a little bit tactical. Let's okay. think about different situations. So let's take someone who has moved, because no one in America has moved oh, in the geez. last year. And you move and you realize, okay, I'm in, you know, maybe for a job or for lifestyle reasons, mm -hmm. and then you think, okay, I'm here, but I don't have any connection. Right. But again, what feels good, what we're just saying is just to buy. And so they find themselves emotionally spending. Uh, so what, that, what that would was you say? me when I moved from Texas to Nashville. And again, going back to those three things, where am I safe? Where do I have reasonable control? And where do I have relationships, yeah. right? So I'm kind of safe in my new city. I mean, mm -hmm. I hope so, right? Mm -hmm. I have control over my Amazon account, and I've got no connection, right? And so that's a driver that I'm gonna start clicking and clicking. I had to put myself in uncomfortable situations to make new friends. And man, there is no playbook for this. It's all risk, it's all uncomfortable and weird. It's like being in middle school again. Yes. At a new middle school, you have to do it. You gotta go find people to be in community with. Okay, well, let's just sit on that piece for a second okay. because again, we've talked about being known, having Ugh, people around you. It's, yeah. such, it's such a vital part of life, you guys, to mm -hmm. live a rich, deep life is to be known. It's so huge. So for that person that's in that new spot, I'm like, it is, it is so... Awkward, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. I think it's harder as adults. Would you say it's harder as adults to form So much friends? harder. I see my little kids. I, I invite people over, and their kids come over. Our kids. Yes, yes. It takes two seconds of they, this weird face off, and then they're, you never hear from them again. They're yep. not playing and then creating new worlds. Yep. And then people that I know at work, we just go to their house, and we just stare at each other, right? Because it's weird. It's like, I don't want to be super vulnerable. Are you? It's going to be weird, right? And so, yeah, you just have to go first. You have to be vulnerable. You have to know people are going to think you're weird. You have no shared history. You just got to get into it and do it. Yep. And it's there's no way around it, Rachel. It's just awkward and weird and so important. And I think a lot of people that you start to— reach out to, they're, I mean, statistically, they're probably well, lonely, they're lonely, too. They're lonely, too. Yes, yeah, so everybody is. Yep. Somebody's got to go first. Yep, I love that. Okay, situation two. Okay. I talk about this a lot on the show. Checking accounts and married couples. <sighs> so joining that account is so crucial, so crucial in the long-term health of your marriage and your finances, all of it. I think it's yeah. just, it's key. It's, it's, it's saying, literally, we are a team. We are in this together. Yes. So if there's a couple who's been married and they have not combine their checking accounts from a mental health mm -hmm. expert's opinion. <laughs> what is that doing? Like, what is that What is that showing you in a marriage? You are driving down the highway side by side in different cars. You are not together, right? And you double your risk of getting on the wrong roads. You double your risk of one of you getting in a car. You just double your risk of everything. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be together. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. ask yourself, why don't you feel safe joining your checking account? And you gotta put those fears out on the table and you gotta mine them for evidence. Are they true? Is this person really untrustworthy? Or is it you? What is it about this, this fear you guys have of joining your stuff together? Because if you're if you can't do something as simple as join your checking accounts, man, how are you gonna how, how can you create a family? How how can yeah. you grow kids together and have joint um, shared values. I mean, all of it. Dreams, yeah. goals, all of it. Yeah. yeah. It's a big deal. It, it's it's the lowest thing. If you don't trust the person you're marrying enough to join a checking account, that's the that's the easiest thing. That's the lowest common denominator. Yep. You've got trust issues in your relationship. You guys got to sit down and reimagine what y'all are doing because you're going on two separate roads, two separate destinations. Okay, so what would you say to the couple? Because this is what I hear a lot. Mm -hmm. is like, it's just a piece of me. You know, I was talking to a couple mm -hmm. um, that were friends and we were talking about it. And she said... Yeah, it just kind of feels good, though. She's like, I've built this career. Like, they got married later in life. And, like, 
this is my thing. This is what I've worked hard for. And for me to be able to see it and, and doing my own thing, it, it, it gives her a sense of value. Right. And so a level of independence. But that's not really the case. Like, what would you say is it's that It's a level layer? of control, right? Mm. What is that thing I can control? Because if I put it all in this bucket, I have to let control go. That's true. Right? Yeah. And we have to reimagine what control is together, not just by myself. That's good. And so by myself... This control is very childish. It's very, these are my toys. You can't play with them. Mm -hmm. It just looks different because you got more zeros and a bigger checking account. It's the same thing. And what marriage is, a good marriage is us taking all of our toys and put them in the same box and saying, we're in this together. Yep. Ride or die. Right? So great. Yep. Okay, so last one. Let's okay. say, you know, pandemic hit. People were furloughed, lost jobs. Mm -hmm. And someone is 18 months into all of this. Oof, and yeah. they still can't find a job, specifically in their field, which is really frustrating, yeah. right? If you work hard at something, you master a certain skill or a certain part of, the, of an industry and you can't find jo a job there. Like That's so frustrating. Yeah. It has to it feel hopeless. From you, so yeah. yeah, so what, yeah. what would you say to that person? I would say if you're feeling depressed or exhausted, that's normal. You're not broken. You should be. It's frustrating, right? And then you got to have what I call some truth-telling moments with yourself. Is the thing that you love doing still valued by the marketplace? And that can be a hard conversation, mm -hmm. right? Is there a moment when the thing you love, I want to be a jazz pianist or a writer or a, um, a coal miner, or I want to raise horses for the roads. And who's this Henry Ford guy bringing his Model T cars, right? Is there a moment when I'm going to have to raise horses as a hobby because i got to go find other work? You have to have that conversation. Yeah. Is it just your location? Do you have to have a hard conversation about... I don't want to leave my church and my friends and my community, but work is over here. I may have to move. And three, do I just got to learn new skills? Do I have to learn new ways of getting in contact with these employers? Do I have to learn new stuff, right? And at some point, you got to have those hard, truth-telling conversations with yourself. And I think what that does is you kind of, you know, you, you push through all of the emotional mm -hmm. side of that ownership of your life to really say, okay, what's the reality? Like, I can, I can, can live I in this. Yes. yes. I, yeah. I, I can't control, after 18 months, you can't control who's going to hire you. Yeah. You can't control new skills, new locations, new jobs, new dreams, whatever. You can control those things, right? Love it. John, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on. So great. Guys, you can check out all of Dr. John Deloney's stuff. He has a podcast, The Dr. John Deloney Show, YouTube. You're on social media, which you weren't before you came here to Rams No, Solutions. I am in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Welcome, at John Deloney. Your book, Redefining Anxiety, so much there. Because it's, it, I love the space you're in. I think Thank it's you. fascinating. You're so great at it. And honestly, guys, diving into this part of your lives, it's so, so important. So make sure to check out all of his stuff. John, thanks Thank again. you so much. Thank you, guys.